It's a dialogue, not a monologue. And some people don't understand that. Social media is more like a telephone than a television. Amy Jo Martin. You're listening to Writing Roots, brought to you by Aspen House Publishing. Welcome to Writing Roots. I'm Lee Hull. And I'm Lee Esses. Our topic today is social media. Speaking of social media, go to our Facebook page, Writing Roots Podcast. Give us a like, give us a follow, get involved with us on social media, and we'll have more advice for you. Be able to answer your questions about how to use it for your writing branding. Quick plug there. Let's get into how to use social media for marketing. This is huge. It's also incredibly delicate. If I like what someone has to say and I follow a stranger on social media and then every hour all I see is more and more posts about what they want from me, I'm going to unfollow them very quickly. If I see more about what I can get from them, then I'm more likely to continue to follow them in some regard. All of your posts should offer your readers something. It shouldn't always just be begging them to buy your book. Let's get into the different kinds of platforms. The main platforms where you will see author interactions are Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Yes, Instagram. It is big. It is growing, especially if you are writing YA. I hear a lot of people say that they get more bang for their buck on Instagram than any other social media site. I personally am not on it. My target audience isn't there, and you really don't want to see pictures of me holding the book. But I am on Facebook, and I technically have a Twitter account I haven't touched in like three years, which is bad. Don't do that. When you're choosing which platform you use, you have to consider your target audience. If your target audience is older, Facebook is the way to go. If your target audience is, like I said, YA, Instagram. If it's kind of in between and the group of people that really like hashtags, go with Twitter. A fourth option would be your forums or blogs like Reddit and Tumblr. These are not as easy to get into and get niche markets in because there's so much there. It's not as easy to build interactions there, but it's a good place to go for marketing. Something I will advise you as authors to do is to set up a separate page for your author persona. If you follow Lee S's on Facebook, you're going to get little quotes about writing, interesting things that I find, puns, you'll, you'll see a lot of puns, and especially dark humor, because that's what I want my audience to think of me. If you follow my personal page, you're going to get pictures of dogs, You're going to get a weather forecast. You're going to get (laughs) things that are not remotely relevant to who I am in your world, which is the author. This applies across all social media and internet interactions. You need to keep your personal pages, your personal setups separate from your professional pages. People don't always care about your political opinion. So if you like to share your political opinion on your personal page, keep that off your professional page. Unless, of course, your target audience has to do with your politics in some way. In which case, you're more filtering out people who wouldn't be interested in your book than you are maintaining people who are. So I give myself about an hour a day to spread my Lies's wings throughout social media. If you have a blog or website for you and your writing, make sure it is branded to you as the author, not the book, so that people can constantly go to you as the author and find all of your books. You don't have to have like three different pages for three different books. So if Brandon Sanderson's website was mistborn.com, then it would be very difficult to maintain the same audience if this person joined from the Alcatraz series, because they won't be backtracking as much. But both point to Brandon Sanderson, and he can then point to all of his books. So let's get into the use of social media. This applies to almost all of the sites, though the specifics are going to be a little bit different. When you post, 
you need to put thought into it. It needs to be designed. Almost every single platform, especially Facebook, puts a priority on posts that includes words as well as images and videos. If it does not have an image or a video attached, it is less likely to get distributed to the fans because algorithms are terrible and they don't always make sure the people who follow you see your post. This is one of those easy ways to contact your readers before your next book is out. I think every career author that I follow has done a cover reveal at some point since I started following them. Whatever their next book is, this is the beginning of building momentum for your next book that's about to be released. Social media is where your fans are going to look for this information. So how do I design a post for most effectiveness? You mentioned an image. Is that it? Just have a pretty picture? Make sure the image is targeted to your book. So if you have branding for the book that we talked about two episodes ago, where you have a color theme or picture theme, make sure that is part of your book. Or alternatively, a picture of you or like your puppy with the book. People love to see the person behind the writing. They love to feel connected with that. So write your post. I'll talk a little bit more about the actual wording of the post in our next episode where we're talking about tease writing, but have the wording, have an image that will grab attention. Pictures of puppies, pictures of cats, pictures of you, but make sure it always includes your book and your branding, your imagery. One particular post that really stands out in my mind is an author who got her advanced copies of the book before it even released. And her puppy, I think was like eight months old at the time, got into and chewed up one of the books. So she posted a picture of the dog with the scattered remnants of this book, looking up at her like, I'm a good dog. And then turned it into a fan giveaway had something to the nature of Timber ate it all in one sitting or something like that. If you want a Timber approved advanced reader copy of this book, like and share and comment and yeah. enter the contest. It was a great way to make light of what could have easily been an emotional tragedy for the author. Another thing about designing your post is looking at the timing of when it's posted. Posting at midnight or two o'clock in the morning is not always effective. Algorithms play with this a little bit, but especially if you are on Twitter or Instagram, those are timeline-oriented platforms. If you are posting at two o'clock in the morning, your post is going to be buried. So make sure that you're scheduling it out or you take the time at a good time of day where your target audience is going to be online and cruising to make those posts. The scheduling posts ability in whatever platform you're in is your friend. If you don't know how to use that, go on to whatever platform you're using, experiment, discover what works for you, because then you don't have to be married to social media. You can say, for the 10 days leading up to the release of the book, I wanna release a different quote from the book every day. I can generate all of those graphics with matching branding, and schedule them to release on their own so I don't have to spend that time to remember and invest. Not only Facebook, but I know YouTube has some scheduling out. WordPress, which is often going to be your author website platform, will allow you to schedule posts. Knowing that this tool exists means that instead of one hour every day, you can spend one day a week being present on social media. And it feels like you're active every day. There are also several third-party companies that you can sign up for to schedule out posts on platforms that don't have scheduling, such as Twitter and Instagram. Consistency is key. When it comes to how you post, you don't want to overwhelm. If I see too many posts from a single page in a day, I'm more likely to unfollow them because I don't want to be overwhelmed with just one person's stuff. But if you don't post enough, then there's not going to be enough interaction there. 
to make sure that the algorithms are picking up that your readers like interacting with this page. So they're not going to be sending it out quite as much. And this applies mostly to Facebook. Even if they're not interacting, if your name passes their Facebook feed, the job is done. Mission accomplished. It's done its little bit of advertising to help get you to stay in the forefront of their minds. But you have to make sure it feels natural. If you're posting verbatim the exact same thing in four different groups, people are going to get very annoyed. If it's a, hey, I wrote this book about my grandmother and today's her birthday. Okay, that's interesting. Oh, today's one year from when I published. Look at my puppy. She's cute. Yep. Buy my book. (laughs) Even if it's a, hey, I found a recipe for Romulan ale. While you're drinking it, check out my Star Trek fan fiction. Each of these posts should feel natural. And this especially applies to commenting on other people's posts. Make sure if you are commenting that the comment fits the thread. As an author, you also need to be interacting with other pages. Join writers groups. Be involved with them. Write, comment, post, but be careful how you comment. I mentioned briefly earlier about not overwhelming your audience. Don't spam. There are some things that you want to focus on. If you have something coming up, a launch party or a pre-release, if you have like a launch party or a live read, some kind of event, ahead of time, you need to be keeping up the buzz. Keep the interest alive. Post different pictures, different graphics, but don't overwhelm them. An easy way to do this is to make sure that each one is very different. So if you want to get people excited about the book, you might do a Facebook Live of you doing an unboxing of the first time you see your name on the cover of a book. They can join you in the excitement. One of the things that I like to do is to give little teases leading up to the publication of the book. So if you like this offhand comment from this character, It gives you an idea of what all of the writing looks like. But once that event comes and goes, you're not done advertising. You need to keep the interest alive. Stay online. Keep sharing quotes. Keep sharing relevant posts. Create memes for your books and write those. Give different writing tips or suggestions, advice related to the contents of your book, whatever it is that you know to go from there. And let your audience know about all of your other marketing techniques that you're doing. Hey, I'm going to be interviewed on such and such station. Tune in at 8 p.m. on Wednesday and tag that station so that all of the station's fandom on their Facebook page at least read your name. Tagging people is a very healthy way to advertise to people who don't already follow your page. You also need to stay up to date with current events. However, as I said earlier, unless your book or your branding is directly politics related, leave politics out of it or you are going to ostracize or anger a lot of people. Just don't go there. I find using current events is a great way to market. Let's say you've done a print version, an ebook, and an audiobook for your book. And then all of a sudden, COVID hits, nobody's driving anymore. Hey, check out the print version. Being aware of where your audience is, is key in making sure the book gets into their hands. And really just do your research. Find out the best platforms, the best ways to post, the best types of posts for you, your audience, and the platforms. And please, when you are writing the posts, edit, double check, triple check, double double check, Make sure they are grammatically correct, that punctuation is proper in place, because if you, as an author, as a published author, do not have grammatically correct social media content, I will automatically discount any book that you may post. And this goes to the professionalism of your brand. Even if you're writing YA, You still want whomever is purchasing your book to have confidence in your book. 
if you misspell or use the wrong your or whatever. Your viability and the trust in you as an author goes down. On top of being involved in social media, having pages, posting, look for opportunities to have ads on different social media and internet sites. This will take some monetary investment because you have to pay for ads, but it can make a difference in expanding your audience beyond what you can reach yourself. If you're looking for the most bang for your buck, I would say Facebook is going to give you the best kind of results, at least as far as exposures and interactions. Google ads exist, but if you're well branded, then it's not going to be super helpful because you want to make sure that you are the first thing that comes up when they search your name. But if your name is Joe Smith, there are a thousand Joe Smith authors, Google ads might help your name pop up first. So when she said, if you're well-branded, that means if somebody puts your name or your book in a Google search bar, yours should be the first natural search hit that pops up. You can buy ad space so that your name pops up as the ad that's at the very, very top. But as she said, if you have branded well, if you make sure that your book name, author name is unique enough without being difficult to remember, you should already be at the top of that list. If you Google search writing roots, one of the first options that pops up is going to be writing roots podcast. It will help people understand what they're looking for, because if you're writing roots as exponents versus expanding your knowledge as an author. Those are very different things. You obviously don't need to invest your money in redirecting people with math questions. But if you aren't on the first page of Google, that might be an interesting way to try to bump yourself up or consider rebranding if you're not yet published. Amazon ads are another way to go about that, but you're much better off going organically. So if everyone who's bought Ted Decker's book also has bought mine, the next person who buys Ted Decker's book, my name will pop up. So that is an optimum way to share fandoms with other authors. This is something that you can be thinking of before you ever publish, before you even finish writing. Getting started on creating your social media presence So that when you do publish, when you do release that book, you already have the start of an audience. Be involved. Like I said, find those writing groups online, participate, help answer questions, ask questions if you need them. There are so many options. And if you intend to traditionally publish, these numbers, the number of followers that you have, will get traditional publishers' attention. It can only help you in your career as an author, whichever path you take. So be thinking about how you're going to be involved on social media. Be thinking about your branding. Be thinking about your book branding. And even when you write ads, write selfishly. If you have a question or comment for our hosts or a topic you'd like us to cover, send us an email at writingroots at aspenhousepublishing.com or find us on Facebook by searching for Aspen House Publishing. 